Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a very special episode of Easy Buckets. How y'all doing today? In this video, we're gonna be talking about something that you guys have highly requested recently. Yesterday, I posted a poll on my YouTube community asking you guys, if I were to make a video tomorrow on an NBA team rebuild, which team would it be? And this is what you guys said. You guys wanted me to make an OKC rebuild video, so I got you guys. Here it is. When talking about OKC, they were 100% one of the most surprising teams in the NBA. Last offseason, losing Russell Westbrook and Paul George, nobody thought that this team would go anywhere. Nobody thought this team would be a playoff squad. But guess what? They made the playoffs and made a big run. Sadly though, they lost in the first round in Game 7 to the Houston Rockets, but they were so close on making it to the second round. Led by Chris Paul and young gun Shai Gilgis Alexander, OKC was absolutely amazing in 2020. So in this video, we're going to talk about OKC's future and how they can improve for next season and the future. The biggest question about OKC is should they rebuild now or still try to win now? And you know what, in this video, I'm going to answer that question. But one thing's for sure, OKC, their future going forward is certainly bright. And I'm gonna tell you guys exactly why. But quickly, before I get on with the video, I just wanna say, if you're new to the channel and love basketball, welcome to Easy Buckets. My name is Soom, and I make basketball videos every single day. So if you are new, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click this button right here, the post notification bell, to not miss any of my upcoming videos. If you watched this video and you loved it, guys, be sure to smash that thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it. It would really help out the channel a lot. But without wasting any more time, let's go straight into OKC and their 2020 offseason and what they can do. To answer my question earlier about what OKC should do, should they rebuild, or should they go for a championship? My answer to that is both. Going into this offseason, OKC is being put in a very rare situation. They have a lot of trading assets, they have a lot of options, and even though they have all of these things, they're still being considered a rebuilding team. But what makes OKC special is although they're rebuilding, they're still contending for the playoffs. And I believe in this offseason, they must keep doing the same thing, keep building for their future, but also giving their young guns experience so one day, they'll become an elite championship contender. This is a simple overview of OKC's offseason. So far when talking about the cap space, they used a total of $101 million, which means they don't really have that much money to sign contract players and free agents at a high level. What they do have is their mid-level exception of $9.26 million and a biannual exception of 3.6. When talking about the NBA draft, they have the 25th overall pick, which they got from Denver Nuggets in 2016, and they also have the 53rd pick in the second round. When talking about their current roster, going into next season, these are the players under a contract. There's Chris Paul, Steven Adams, Dennis Schroeder, Shai Gilgis Alexander, Terrence Ferguson, Darius Baisley, Lou Dort, and Isaiah Robbie. When talking about the players that could potentially be leaving due to free agency, there's Danilo Gallinari, Andre Robertson, Nolan's Noel, Mike Muscala, Nader, Diallo, Bhutan, and Devon Hall. This is basically a simple overview of OKC and what their offseason is looking like at the beginning. So now let's move over to what I believe OKC must do for next season. The first thing I believe they should do is sign a perfect rookie in the NBA draft with that 25th overall pick. And if there's a rookie I have in mind, I believe they should draft RJ Hampton who is a great and athletic shooting guard. Averaging 32 points per game, 9.5 rebounds, and 6.2 assists in his senior year in high school, RJ Hampton is known in this year's draft as one of the best scorers out of everybody. He's a 6'5 combo guard, can also play the 3, but what's very special about RJ Hampton is his ball handling ability. If OKC ends up losing Chris Paul, their point guard, this offseason in a big time trade, which I believe they will, 
draft RJ Hampton, he would be a great guard to replace CP3 and just give OKC a scoring punch. The next step is finding the perfect head coach after losing Billy Donovan this year. When talking about Billy Donovan, he was actually a great coach for OKC. He had an amazing relationship with the veterans of Steven Adam, Chris Paul, and Gallinari, but the reason why he left OKC was because he wanted to be on a team that's 100% trying to contend. At the time when Billy Donovan left, OKC was unsure what they'll do, either if they'll rebuild or go for an NBA championship, that's why Billy ended up signing with another team. When talking about the head coach scouting of OKC, they are currently looking for an assistant head coach in the NBA that's considered a veteran. OKC has been linked to David Vanterpool of the Timberwolves, Adrian Griffin of the Raptors, or even Becky of the San Antonio Spurs. Watching OKC was super fun this year, and I just can't wait to see who they hire as their next head coach. Now when talking about free agency, I believe they must re-sign and bring back Danilo Gallinari. Gallinari was a big part of OKC's run this year to the NBA playoffs. He was their starting power forward and the best three-point shooter on the team. Averaging 19 points per game, playing plus 30 minutes, Danilo Gallinari has been completely healthy over the past season and his future is surely looking bright as he's averaging 40 plus percent at the three-point line. Gallinari is a big man in the NBA that fits the new style of play of floor spacing and his value in the NBA is sky high right now. With him becoming an unrestricted free agent, he can go wherever he wants and I believe OKC must bring him back, bring him back to be their starting power forward. The next free agent I believe they should sign is signing Aaron Baines previously of the Phoenix Suns, especially if they end up losing Nolan's Noel. The rumors of their backup center of Noel leaving the team is very high right now and the chances of him staying is very low which means I believe they must target a dominant big man center on the defensive end and Aaron Baines will be perfect in that role. Aaron Baines is slowly developing a 3 point shot and I believe his addition to come off the bench for this team will mean a lot. Sign Aaron Baines to be your backup center behind Steven Adams especially if you need a little floor spacing. The next step is giving Lou Dort a bigger role. Lou Dort was OKC's rookie last year and during the NBA playoffs, he was absolutely amazing, especially guarding James Harden. If OKC end up losing Andre Robertson in free agency, which is something I see to be likely, make Lou Dort your starting small forward, give him consistent minutes to be a 3 and D player and developing for the future alongside Shaikidz Alexander. I like Lou Dort, I like his attitude, I like his humbleness, and his size for the NBA, he can be one of the best on-ball defenders in the league. But the next part of this video is absolutely my favorite, and that's finding the perfect trade for Chris Paul. Chris Paul was absolutely amazing for OKC this year. He was the main reason why OKC made it to the playoffs, he was their veteran leader, he was their floor general, and he just taught this team so many things. Although I would love to see Chris Paul do it again for OKC, he is getting old and I want to see him succeed. He has never won an NBA championship and has never made it to the NBA finals. And with that, I believe OKC should trade him for good assets in return for the franchise, but also put Chris Paul in a better situation. And if there's a perfect trade package scenario that I believe would be perfect for OKC and Chris Paul, it would be a trade with the Philadelphia 76ers. If OKC can offer up Chris Paul, do a sign and trade with Nolens Noel and three first round picks, in return getting Ben Simmons and Josh Richardson, I believe this would be a great trade for both sides. On the Thunder's perspective, they'll be getting an all-star player, a future superstar of Ben Simmons to be their new point guard to continue competing in the playoffs and on the 76ers side, getting a veteran leader to assist Joel Embiid. Imagine this lineup for OKC, Ben Simmons point guard, Shai Gilchis Alexander shooting guard, Lou Dort small forward, Gallinari power forward, Adams at center, having Dennis Schroeder and Josh Richardson off the bench, I believe OKC could potentially be going to the playoffs again. But overall though guys, I do believe trading Chris Paul is the best thing for OKC, try to find the best assets possible for him. But ultimately guys, this wraps up my video for today on OKC and what they can do this offseason. 
The good news about OKC is that their future is surely bright. They got a lot of draft picks from that Paul George and Russell Westbrook trade, so their future is still set. So I believe what they must do in this offseason is try to rebuild, but also still go and compete for the playoffs. But other than that, take it easy. God bless, and I'll see you all next time on Easy Buckets. Oh. I got angels flying.